right along, chapter 12, quadratic functions. I'm going to compare, right now, a quadratic function with a linear function. Quadratic functions are parabolas. Linear functions are lines. Quadratic functions are polynomials, usually trinomials, with squares. Linear functions don't have squares. They're degree one polynomials. We're going to go over that in a minute. And you can see that right here. f of x equals x plus 1, linear function. f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6, quadratic function. Parabolic or quadratic function. So um, this is a line, and this is a parabola. We're going to see that on the graph. It's like a U-shaped, sometimes upside down. Now, what is a function? A function is a set of outputs for a given set of inputs. The best way to see that is in a T-chart. And you guys remember this from first semester, chapter 7. If I put in a value for x, an input, like 0, what will I get for our y value or f of x value? We'll get 0 plus 1 equals 1. So f of 0, the value of the function at 0 is equal to 1 kind of reminds you of x and y, doesn't it? It's the same thing, that's y. f of x, the value of the function at x, is the same thing as y. It's just another way of saying it. Now remember, I had this in the last class, f of x does not mean f times x. It's, it's a little confusing, but that's not what it is. This just tells you that the value of the function, or the value of the graph, at the point x, is this. Okay. Now, what's next? Let's pick another point. Somebody give me a point. Not a big one, but a, yeah? Two. Two? And Kia's got her hand up. Yeah? Five. Five. Sure, why not? Five? What's f of five? What's the value of the function of five? Anybody know? We'll put it in for x, and it equals six. Okay, remember doing this? You guys? So let's take, now let's take Seven two. Seven and one. Let's take two. Let's take f of two is equal to 2 plus 1 equals 3. Let's take negative 2. And that's equal to 3. We put negative 2 in. Anybody know what we're going to get? Negative 2 plus 1 is equal to negative 1. Good. Okay. What happens if we take negative 1 half? Okay. Sometimes you have to take, you have to deal with fractions. F of negative 1 half is equal to what? Negative 1 half plus 1 is equal to 1 half. All right, now I think we've got, definitely got enough points there to be able to graph that, right? Remember doing that? Okay, now we have x and y, but this is actually f of x. It's the same thing. Now we're using different notation. Instead of, saying, instead of calling it y, we're going to call it f of x. So now point 0 and 1 would be here. 0.56 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up here would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll be up here. I'm doing the line. Um, 2 and 3 would be 1, 2, and 3. Now you see what's forming here? You guys remember this? 1, 2, negative 2, and negative 1 is here. And that's enough. I don't really have to keep doing this. I just know that that's a line going through here. And there we go. It's the line, in fact, f of x equals x plus 1, where x is any input that we put into the function, and y, or f of x, is the output. And that's the graph. This is the value of the function at 2. At 2, the value of the function is 3. That's why we say f of x. Now, let's go to a parabola and look at the difference. Oh, how do you graph that? Okay, good question. Negative a half and a half is graphed as halfway along between 0 and 1, and then 1 halfway up, so it's right there on the line. Okay, Okay. well, a parabola, I promised you, would be ended up looking like a U-shape. Okay, so now, the first thing we're going to do is create a T-chart. And our T-chart is going to look like this, x and f of x. Right? <coughs> f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6. Can we do one for the first one? Sure. Let's put in one. We're going to get f of one equals one squared plus one minus six, which is equal to two minus six, which is equal to negative four. Okay. Now let's put in seven. 
No, we don't want to put in big numbers because that's just going to make it crazy. One, let's put, two, zero. yeah, that's basically what we do. But let's put a negative one. Let's see if we can get anything going with that. Now, the nature of these is a little bit different. Negative one squared because, or plus negative one, actually. Minus six, because we're substituting that in. It's one minus one minus six is equal to just zero minus six is equal to negative six. Okay, now I'm going to take a turn and take zero. Zero, yeah. F of zero. Anybody get that? Zero squared plus zero minus six equals negative six. Negative two. Now, oh, look it. We put a negative one and we put in zero and we've got negative six in both cases. That's kind of interesting. We never got that with a line, did we? No. no. Let's see why in a minute. You'll see why we get that particular pattern. Um, if we put in one half or a negative one half, let's see what we get. F of negative one half. It's equal to negative one half squared plus negative one half minus six. Okay, that's going to be one quarter minus one half minus six. One quarter minus one half is going to be negative a quarter minus six, and that's going to be negative six and a quarter. Negative six and a quarter. I think we've got enough to graph, right? We've got one negative four, so it's one, and down here. We've got negative one, negative six. Negative one, negative six is going to be down here. Zero, negative six. That's weird, isn't it? Because we've got negative six for the f of x value, so they're even like that. Um, and then we've got negative a half. That would be about here, and it would be a negative six and a quarter, so it's slightly lower right there. And then we have one more thing. Let's put in. Let's just see what we would get if we put in negative 2. Okay, so f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 6, which is equal to 4 minus 2 minus 6, which is equal to 2 minus 6, which is equal to negative 4. And that goes here. And guess what? We've got another one where it doubles up. We've got two different x values, but the same y value or f of x value. Minus 2, minus 4, so it's in line with that. And perhaps some of you might see a smiley face coming <laughs> together here. A little crack a little smile on your face when we draw this. This is what's called. So we go like that. And that's a rough sketch, okay? Um, now, the parabola is cut in half with the axis of symmetry at this point here. Okay. That's the line. X equals negative one half. It's the line of symmetry. Symmetry is spelled S Y M M E T R Y. And it cuts it in half. Now, how did I find that line, folks? Notice back here with a negative half. There's a way to find that. And the vertex down here, okay, this is the bottom of the parabola. It's called the vertex. Bottom of the parabola is negative a half and six, negative six and a quarter. How do you know what the vertex is? That's the question. The vertex is, believe it or not, there's a formula, negative b over 2a. So if I go back to our original problem where, okay, where f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6. Do you remember what a equals and b equals and c equals? a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 6. Okay? So we use that information right there to find our vertex. Negative 1 over 2 times 1, which is equal to negative a half. Look at that. And what we, what we find for our line of symmetry is also equal to negative b over 2a. Just one whole type per second. Uh, over. x equals negative 1 half is our line of symmetry. Now, negative 1 half can be put back in for your f of x value, and then you graph it at negative 6 and a quarter. Okay. Cut. Cut. You guys are so cold. <laughs> You're so I'm cold. My head this oh, is so there. cold. Oh. Number oh, demon child. It's okay. Oh,